אזרחי ישראל? classic phrases that we might actually say a few years ago without much thinking about it. But anyone who has been through this past season, these past nearly seven months, thinks about that phrase in a very different way. We saw the world stop, and we saw that we didn't want to get off. We wanted it back. Tonight, we talk to God. We ask God to be with us, to help us to bring our world to a sense of wholeness, back to a sense of hope. Hineni b'tselem Elohim, here I am. I'm in the image of God. My soul is pure, and the world is in my hands.
turn now to our service, page six. On page six, we will encounter the words of the ashray, the joy that we feel to be gathered together to praise God. to continue with Anesha Malach, this beautiful prayer, and we would like to welcome Eugenia Gerstin, our choir director, and Cole Emanuel for this wonderful and fabulous effort of uh, making all these videos throughout the summer so they can be with us tonight and throughout the holidays. Anesha Malach. Oh. 
Page 30, Let the 
acceptable to you. Um, wow. This moment kind of embodies the question that you'll see in the song we're going to show. In one sense, uh, the, wor the world has been very changed by coronavirus. The coronavirus has changed the world. Um, here we are on Slichus, and Jeremiah and Elaine, thank you for your instruments and your song. And of course, Dave and Brian, thank you for making it available to our congregation. And Elias and Dan and Elisa and Michelle, your song is just so uplifting. It's so beautiful. It's so poignant. And it's so painful that the pews are empty. And when the, when the camera sc scans the sanctuary, you see Jeremiah, you see Elaine, and you see empty pews. So coronavirus has changed the world. And those of you who are watching and listening to this completely uplifting and completely gorgeous and inspiring song, you're doing good from home. The coronavirus has changed the world. But here's the question for you tonight. Has the coronavirus changed you? I'm struck by the um, beauty and poignancy of my colleagues that every night, including now, you bring forth your gorgeous song to empty pews and to the people who are davening online, who, like God, we can't see, but we can sense. And so we're always left with this fact that the coronavirus has changed the world. And the question, has it changed us? So what we're going to see now is the posture of one modern Israeli singer on this question. And I'd like you to marinate on a couple of questions. What is the posture of this Israeli singer on this question? And what is your own? Have you changed during the coronavirus in ways that are lasting? And if so, how? And if so, are you good with those changes? So we're going to hear the song and then a few more prayers. And after Avina Malkenu, we'll come together for a conversation. כבר חשבנו, ניצחנו הכל מגדלים בשמיים בנינו בן אדם, מי צריך בן אדם לא יבוא עוד מבול בימינו לעולם, לעולם לא ניפול תעזוב, נסתדר בעצמנו 
חכמים, נכונים וצודקים, וכלום לא נמצא מעלינו עד שבאת והדבקת, ושיגעת והזכרת, ובלבלת והבהלת מיד. איך החזרת את השפיות, געגועים לבני אדם? פתאום שורף את הבדידות, כבר לא טסים מפה לשם. כל הפארקים נעולים, חתונות כמעט בלי איש, כמעט איבדנו את עצמנו, כמעט הפסקנו להרגיש. עוד מעט זה הכל ייגמר, ואני מבקש אם אפשר שבבוקר אחרי שתלכי לא נהיה שוב אותו הדבר. We are seated. We have a very special melody tonight that our Chazan will introduce to us. So as you can see in your handouts, we have a piyut called Adona Selichot that it is not part of our regular liturgy in the Selichot service, neither in Yom Kippur. This is a Sephardic piyut that was written in the 11th century and for many centuries it was lost until it was found in the um, Cairo Geniza and since it was discovered, it spread out in the world of Sephardic Jews in mostly Syria, Morocco, and other different parts of the world, and became the central prayer of Slichot. After this service, uh, I would recommend you Google Slichot at the Kotel, Adona Slichot at the Kotel Amaravi. You'll see 100,000 Sephardim praying this prayer. And we would like to share this beautiful song with you.
we turn to page 46 as we once again turn our service over to Kol Emanuel, Shomer Yisrael. Shomer, Shomer Yisrael, Shomer Shomer Yisrael, Shomer turn to God in two very different metaphors tonight, God as parent and God as king. And we ask whether you see us as our parent or as our king, be gracious unto us. And in a sense, as we combine those two metaphors, it is calling God to the mat. We are in need of your help. We are in need of your guidance to be better today than we were yesterday and still better tomorrow. Lift us up. We rise. Page 46, as Cole Emanuel leads us again. Say, 
Eugenia and Cole Emanuel, we want to just thank you for your beautiful songs and so uplifting to hear you, so grateful for your songs and for your recordings. So, the coronavirus has changed the world, and our question now is, has it changed you? So two questions for a conversation. Uh, first is, what is the posture of Hanan ben Ari, the Israeli singer whose song that we heard? Just one editorial note. He says one thing in that song that has turned out not to be true. He said, speaking to the virus, you'll be leaving us soon. <laughs> now, he, he recorded that song before Pesach because we and many other families watched it at our Pesach Seder. And he said around Pesach, you'll be leaving us soon, the coronavirus. I talked to my father in Jerusalem today. He said the coronavirus is terrible in Israel. And the word on the street in Israel, I'm not reporting this as news, I'm just telling you what my 92-year-old father in Jerusalem is telling me based on what he's hearing, is that the, that the country is going to be in lockdown before Rosh Hashanah. Um, and so uh, the, their synagogue, which was expecting to have services of 300 people, is not going to likely be able to have services of 300 people. Uh, so it hasn't left yet. So, uh, first question, uh, dear colleagues, and also I want to reach out to Elaine and Jeremiah. What is the posture of this singer, Hanan Ben Ari, on our question? Uh, does, what, what do you think is his point? He made this song. What is his point in this song? Anybody? Uh, Elisa. So, the first time I heard this song, it, it was cognitive dissonance, because to me it sounds like a love song a ballad to a, a problematic relationship, problematic lover. Um, and, I was, and, and coronavirus feels like, how can you be in love with that? But I think his posture is that this virus, which has, has had such destructive powers, also has brought us some real blessings and some gifts. And how do we take the good and leave the bad? OK, so it's, it's a love ballad to a virus with a question of, 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 take, of, of taking the good. And what, how does it end? What do you think is his posture at the end of the song? Is it a question? Is it a statement? Does he have a point of view? To me, it, it leaves with this unsettled, like, I, I have, I'm infatuated with the parts of you that are good for me and the parts of you that are good for our world, and I'm distressed over the parts that are not, and I don't quite know what to do with that. And... Um, how does he reckon or does he reckon with the fact that, you know, almost a million people have died from the virus worldwide? I mean, not at the time that he sang it, but, uh, you know, as Elias was mentioning uh, in his comments today in the Torah portion, almost 200,000 in the States and almost a million worldwide. Um, what do you think about a love ballad to a virus that has claimed so many lives? I think we love all sorts of things that are really harmful for us, and he's... I don't see him grappling with the, the depth of loss in this song. I feel like he is, he is searching out for the good and, and, um, and musically too, it's, it's, it's all major and beautiful and, and it, it's written not as a, a dirge, it's written very much in an upbeat way. Love song to a virus. So, I, I, I don't, I don't um, see, oh, go ahead. Uh, I don't hear any major chord in that song, Alice, I'm sorry. I think it's a beautiful <laughs> song and it's, uh, it tells the story as it is. What, what story, story does it tell? The, 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 what we experienced in the last six months. You know, weddings without people, uh, devastation, you know, people losing beautiful and loved relatives. And then at the end, it's a wish, what he says. I wish you change, you know. And I take from that, from my own experience, is, you know, we cannot be the same after all this. We have to really see what's going on in the world and really appreciate the things that really matter. Yeah, and it's and a wish that people will change. Yes. Yeah. And I, I want to emphasize that um, and affirm to you, Elias, I didn't hear a love song as much, although I see where you could see that. It is a sad um, song. To me, almost on a cellular level, it's a song of loss. It's, it's about what we do not have in this moment, but then from it peels away that layer and goes to really a core philosophy that we learn most deeply from Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, 
and the idea that our life, our suffering has to mean something. We have to get somewhere where we take the pain and the devastation and the loss and we see that our world was not whole before and we still have a ways to go to hold on to some of the deep truths, the kindness that came out through this, the way that people engaged each other. The fact that we miss each other so much means that maybe next time we're together, we can appreciate each other more. The, we were always running and going and running and going. Now we've been steady, we've been here. Let's appreciate the small things that we have. So I see in this really a parallel to a search to make meaning out of our suffering. Thank you. Dan. I, I loved the fact that it's so biblical. And of course, we're an Israeli composer, you know, talking about the, we built towers like Babel. We have, there won't be a flood again. Um, you know, all these things. And, and also, what have we been learning together while it was last year with the message of the, of the Nevi'im, of the prophets, about, about uh, not listening and also about hubris. The fact that when we don't listen to each other, when we don't listen to the call of the prophets, that, uh, that this is when things become dire. And he brought all of those beautiful messages and so biblically, you know, uh, 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 pointed in it. Um, what I love the most in the song is, of course, the, the hope at the end, uh, the idea that, uh, that we do need to change uh, and that, that, um, that God willing, when this goes past us, uh, that we will not just let it be as it, as it was, but as Michelle said, you know, just um, you know, savoring our, ourselves even more. I want to go back to the first question you asked, which is, um, you know, do we think this has changed us? Yeah, I'll get, I'll get to that. Okay, I'll get to that. Okay. Jeremiah and Elaine, I would love your voices on the song if you wish to share. Uh, what was your reaction to that song? If you wish to share it. Can I speak with this? Yes. Where I was sitting, I could not see the translation, but I was listening to the music, and the music and the song is absolutely beautiful. And I was just watching the pictures go by and it was just thinking about how the world has changed so much, the quietness of everything. And when the, the good of it has come up and I think about how pollution has kind of cleared up. They talked about mm -hmm. how in Venice, the, everything is clearer um, because people aren't out and, and they can see fish now through waterways that they could never see before. And um, the air is clearer, and, but yet you could also see the loneliness that was shown through the pictures. And I was just thinking about how people, I would hope would be better through this after we are through this maybe a year from now, six, whenever this is over with, that we can all take a step back and think about what we've learned from all of this. Mm. Uh, being here tonight, seeing nobody is, I mean, I feel like I'm in tears. I don't see anybody and I'm hoping that people are watching um, because it's such a spiritual place here and I've always enjoyed being here and not to see anybody here is, it, it creates a loneliness and we're just hoping that we reach out to more people this way. It's like the new age where you have technology taking over and the world has changed. I mean, myself, I'm teaching my own students through a phone, through FaceTime without even seeing them. And some things are good about it because you can really concentrate, but the human interaction is missing. I hope that people will when we are able to humanly interact again and talk to people and be with people that will be kinder and nicer mm. and realize that human beings are, we're social beings and we need to be together, we need one another and we should not be destroying one another at all. Amen. Elaine, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you for those good words. Mm. Jeremiah, would you wish to share your reaction to that video? Yeah, I think uh, everything has pretty much been said. Um, uh, like Elaine, I also couldn't see the translation and don't know enough Hebrew, but um, uh, two things I think musically that, that struck me were it sounded like a key change in the middle of the chorus, <laughs> and um, also the ending was kind of abrupt, I, unless that wasn't the whole song, but I assume it was the whole song. Yeah. 
Um, and so I couldn't figure out what, what he was saying exactly, so I just learned that it was a kind of a love ballad or of sorts. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so Jeremiah, he, the end of it is really that question, will we change? The world has clearly changed. The weddings without people and the buildings without people and escalators without people. Have, have we changed? And boom, he leaves us with that question. Let me just uh, turn to, da to David if you have any reaction to the song you would like to share as well. I'll try and make it a little easier for Brian so he can find me over here. Um, Come to the Bima. Here comes. Here we go. I was also of the opinion that um, there's so much going on, there's so much pain in there, but we are finding things that we do and, and ways that we're interacting with people that have had some very positive impacts and um, changes in corporate attitudes towards their employees and, and accommodating things. And the hope is uh, with any kind of difficulty or tragedy, even with wars and so on, you hope that you come out of it having learned something and having changed and trying not to repeat the same mistakes the, the next time a, you know, a difficulty like this comes by. Thank you, David. So let me just close with a quick round, one question, and a very quick pointed 20 second answer for anyone who wishes to share, which is very simply this. Has the coronavirus changed you? And if so, how? Yes or no, and if so, how? Dan? I would say yes. I think I'm far more empathetic and in, in tuned into people than I was before. Michelle? Uh, yes, in a million ways. And I'll just list one that is foundational to my family life. Uh, before the coronavirus, when we would shuffle our children off to school, they would go, but, you know, it was not an exactly loving and wonderful thing. And now uh, my children understand the privilege of being able to go to school. Uh, my daughter uttered a phrase she never thought she would, I'm excited to go to school. <laughs> mm. Do you think that's going to hold? God willing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elias, has the coronavirus changed you? Um, I think in some ways it changed me, in some others it didn't. Um, I always felt that uh, family has the most important role in my, in my life and um, the um, ability that I have now, the possibility of spending every lunch and every dinner with my wife and my kids, it's, it's precious and I always value that. Um, and I have much more appreciation for so many heroes in these months, nurses and uh, doctors, and uh, that I always knew that they are always there for patients, but I could see now firsthand. Eliza, mm. has the coronavirus changed you? Yes, for sure, and I'm not sure. Okay. You don't have to explain. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll no, marinate. I, like, I was really thinking the whole time, like I was thinking, what are the ways, and I'm sure it has had a real big impact, and I know that like my daily rhythms have changed and the way I feel about things has changed, and, um, and there's so much that's different. I think it's hard for me to see within all of that where, what's different in me. Mm. Uh, Elaine, has the coronavirus changed you, and if so, how? Well, it has changed me a lot because, first of all, I was always pretty busy, and then all of a sudden, everything is taken away from you, so you are stuck at home. So, I mean, physically, things like staying home and cooking and having family time. At the very beginning, I had really great family time, but when the phases started coming in, um, I started losing that family time because we have a teenager that likes to go off. <laughs> but... Um, in the, I also became more, not, I don't want to say political, but I want to say more aware of what's going on because before, again, be, being so busy as an active musician, whatever, you, you would, I would um, 
continue with my life in, in that way and not watch as much uh, television and and now I am trying to be more in tune of different views of things so I'm trying to be more worldly and trying to see really what is going on here and so I think it's changed me I think for the better so that my I have more knowledge of what's happening around yeah. me. Thank you Elaine. Jeremiah has the coronavirus changed you? I would say uh, yes and no. Um, yes in, in the sense that my life has my life uh, style has changed a little bit, you know, having to stay home, um, not being able to go places as much. But I wouldn't say it's changed me as a person so much. Um, but it has certainly allowed me to appreciate things more that I didn't used to, like, you know, family time and, and also to just adapt to the changes like so many people are doing, and everybody's doing here. Um, and to really think about what that means as a human being and, and a musician. Thank you, Jeremiah. And David, has the coronavirus changed you? Um, like Jeremiah, I don't think it's really changed the core person who I am. Um, it's changed how I've approached different things. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it sort of helped me to realize some of the really important things. And Rabbi, you? Um, the big change for me is my relationship to my country. I'm so deeply disappointed, to be honest with you, in response to our country. Um, you know, 200,000 dead. That just feels so tragic and so unnecessary. And we've done so much worse than any country on the planet. So I think that I, I have a lot of work to do on that. Um, I was reading some, of course, we all read so many articles, but I read in some column yesterday that, like, Canada had two people who died yesterday, and we had over a thousand people who died yesterday. Um, I may be off on the numbers, but it was something very evocative. Canada had two people, we had over a thousand people, and all these months later, our country, there's still people not wearing masks, and they're still making a political, and they're still denying science, and that's killing me. It's killing, it's killing our country, and it's killing me. So that's been the big change for me, and I'm just trying to figure out, can our country emerge from this stronger or not? And that, to me, is the open question, and I'm praying on that, and we've got to work on that every day. Mm -hmm. Hasidic Kaddish, page 50. Israel, 
this time in previous years, we would thank Sisterhood for the beautiful collation that would be awaiting us. Um, I looked up the word collation, and it actually comes from a root which means bringing together. And so while we do not have delicious treats waiting for us out in the hall, we do have the possibility of coming together, and indeed, we have the responsibility to reach out across the digital distance and continue to connect and continue to come together and continue to work to repair ourselves, our families, our country, and our world. May this be our blessing. Yigdal Kol Emanuel. I want to thank Eugenia Gerstein, our choir director, and all the members of Cole Emanuel for being with us, not only tonight, but throughout the summer, putting huge effort. We know that it's not easy to do technology these days, and we really appreciate. At the same time, we want to thank our wonderful musicians. It's so nice to have you back after so many months, Jeremiah Klarman and Elaine Baker, the angel. And uh, obviously, Brian Levski and David Beckman, our wonderful volunteers who help us night and day. And of course, to our wonderful singing colleagues, uh, thank you for your voices and your music, and Wes for your always thought provoking and inspiring words. Have a good evening, everybody, in Shana Tova. Shana Tova. And we want to thank all of you for joining us. Shana Tova.